Welcome back, guys, to another All Things Nerd podcast. As always, my name is Nathan. I'm joined here tonight with my buddy Hype. Hype, what's going on? Hi. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about a very controversial topic, I guess you could say. <laughs> we're going to be talking about Diablo 4 versus Path of Exile 2. They are both upcoming action RPGs um, that's going to be set. Oh, I know Diablo set this year in June. And oh. then Path of Exile 2, I don't know, does it have a release date yet? Yet? Not that I've heard. I have a feeling that they're not really going to give a lot of information for a release date there since they're taking a done when it's done approach or so they claim. Yeah, I mean, that's smart. You know, don't want to give us a half game, right? Which I mean, we hope not. <laughs> so many games have been doing, and I'm hoping that Blizzard follows through with Diablo, right? Who who makes Path of Exile again? Can you, I don't know, can you Branding remind me? Gear game. Branding Gear, okay. I was trying to remember because... You know, everybody knows Blizzard, right? But I know Path of Exile. I'm sure Path of Exile is just as big as Diablo now, right? With how long it's been out for? Or you think it's still the underdog? Uh, I think to most people, they wouldn't, like, non-gamers wouldn't necessarily know Path of Exile. Whereas they, there's a chance they've heard of Diablo. But uh, among gamers, I would think that the two are pretty well known. They're definitely the two big titans in the arpg genre so yeah for sure for sure um so i wanted to ask you tonight a couple of things so the first one was you know if you could give me some of your backstory on you know playing both of the games and which one did you kind of lean towards more in the genre like i guess for instance was there one that you felt after playing it you're like oh my gosh this was so good um but i guess there's only been one path of exile to be fair so i guess it's kind of hard to compare one path of exile to you know three diablos that we've had so far right sort of just because they the league mechanic which is basically the equivalent of seasons in diablo the league mechanic in path of exile has brought some pretty major changes to to certain aspects of the game to the point to where there have been times that I'm like, "Woo, Path of Exile, I'm having so much fun. And then there's been like multiple leagues in a row where I'm like, this is the stupidest change ever. I refuse yeah. to play this. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Where um, in the game Diablo and Path of Exile, where did you feel that most when playing both of them? I don't, I don't really know. Honestly, it's... To me, in a lot of ways, despite the fact that they're both ARPGs, they're they're wildly different in a in a sense. Um, especially when talking about Diablo three versus Path of Exile, which um, you know Diablo three being the <clears throat> the Diablo that I'd say the the current Diablo during most of Path of Exile, um, their development and whatnot, but. It, it really depend, re- depended on, I, I guess, whether I wanted to be a bit more, a bit more casual or or ridiculous. Um, Diablo three, with its sets and you know reigning legendaries and yeah things like that, you know, it was very easy for people even who've never played an ARPG, they could just pick up Diablo 3, learn a couple core mechanics, and then the everything from there is pretty much guided by you know their character's limited skill set and what what sets they want to build around. Mm. Since you know certain sets boost certain skills, it makes it very easy to be like, oh this boosts skill A, I should probably build around skill A. That makes sense. Path of Exile almost went with more of a, I guess I'd say, a Dark Souls type character approach where you, you're going to pick your class and it's going to affect your starting stats and starting gear. Um, it also affected your starting position on their skill tree, but realistically, you you could turn just about any class into anything. You want to start a you want to start a freaking witch that's melee and does cyclone? You could definitely do that. Um, you want to start a shadow that's pure caster? Go nuts. Why do you think that, you know, talking about 
more of the you know the cartoony type i guess you could say approach to diablo 3 why do you think they went from like really dark diablo 1 and 2 to jumping to 3 that kind of looked more like world of warcraft in a sense uh, I do think that the success of World of Warcraft and its, you know, primarily bright, flashy colors and and abilities and things definitely influenced the development of Diablo 3 in that regard. Hmm. Uh, it just it, it just seemed like at that around that time that's what people seemed to want, you know. I mean, yeah. Think of thinking back to game, you know, other bright, flashy games that came out around then, like Borderlands, you know, things like that. Just. It was just for the time. Uh, it was the best that they thought, right? I th- I think so. Yeah, I think. I, I think in their eyes, they they wanted to, they wanted to simplify the game a little bit over Diablo 2's system, you know, systems, to appeal to more people. And I think in order to all to do that, bright, flashy colors and, you know, abilities and things like that were one of the things that they were like, this will catch people's eye. It's it's kind of funny that they thought that because Diablo 2, you know, I mean, from what I think, and I'm sure most people agree, is like the holy grail of Diablo games, right? So going from such a dramatic turn from Diablo 2 to 3 and the graphics and all that, they really took a big risk doing that, I feel like. Uh, Yeah, and uh, in a lot of ways, especially initially, it did not benefit them the way that they were hoping uh having you know played Diablo 3 at launch and put a considerable amount of hours into it back when the auction house was a thing and there was really no end game besides you know okay now go through the hardest difficulty again but find more loot like um I lost my train of thought that's okay. <laughs> I um, one of the things I wanted to mention about Path of, Path of Exile, especially for me, um, you know, I'm 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 on the Diablo side of things. I'm just gonna be honest with you, like I'm Team Diablo, but because yeah. I haven't played, like I've played a, enough ex- Path of Exile to know like what the ga- how you play the game and stuff. But one thing I know is, especially for new players jumping into the game, that skill tree can be super intimidating. <laughs> uh-huh. Like putting your runes in and like, what the heck do I do? You know, and you definitely need a guide going through the first time. So. Uh, I have probably 1,500 hours into Path of Exile and more often than not, I will still use a guide for at least my starting character in a league or things like that. You know, it's... I've that skill tree is ridiculous and it's not just the skill tree that makes the game ridiculous but you know you also have the skill gem system which is how you determine what abilities your character is going to use and then you have gear like you know uniques is their version of legendaries and certain uniques will create interactions with skills that open up a whole new possibility for a build that, you know, might not be viable without it. Mm. But if you don't have, if you don't have the game knowledge to know, you know, things like, Oh yeah, this, this unique exists. It works with this skill in this way. You you might, you might never be able to create your own build for the simple fact, you know, short of intense trial and error over many, many hours. Yeah, for sure you know, willingness to fail and start over because I've, I've created characters. I'm like, I'm going to make my own build. I'm going to do this. I have an idea. I think it's going to work. And turns out that nope, it didn't work. <laughs> and, you know, and that's 30 hours later after a bunch of grinding. Did, did it not work because of just like you pick just maybe one or two wrong runes or did it not work because it just didn't work altogether? You think? Both. Mm, okay. Um, I've, I've had builds that I was like, well, okay, I can't, I can't progress any further than this. Um, and I've had builds that I've then gone into a third party program called path of building, which is literally just a build creation tool for path of exile that will run the numbers for you and things like that based on what you put in. 
I've been able to go to that and fix builds that I was like, nah, this is, I can't get any further. And I've also been able to go to that and look at a build like, all right, how do I fix this? Only to find out. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> how do I fix this? I do it completely differently, like, you know, from the, from the top. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah, um, that's... sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. What's up? I was just going to say from the, the skill trees or anything you're excited for in Path of Exile 2 with the skill tree, like, are you hoping they uh, simplify it a little more or do you think it's perfect the way it is? Just keep building on it. I. Are you kind of like uh, torn? <laughs> I think, I think personally, I would like to see a little bit more, um, a little bit more meaningful or powerful interaction from certain certain parts of the skill tree called keystones. I believe is what they're called. It's been a long time since I've looked up basic terminology, but uh, basically that would be like you know you follow the skill tree to this one path that you know then you have six nodes in a cluster that all benefit one-handed swords and then the last one or whatever will be like a huge stat jump versus the other you know five in the cluster or it'll be something that will you know change change something big for your character like uh one of the most famous ones in the Path of Exile community is CI or Chaos Inoculation. What that does is that sets your <clears throat> maximum health to one, meaning that you're now relying entirely on energy shield to survive. But the benefit is, even though you have one max HP, you're immune to chaos damage. Mm. You don't take damage from poison or dark attacks or things like that. You just ignore them. Interesting. Okay. So I'd like to see more things like chaos inoculation, where it's it has a very big, profound effect on the gameplay and on your build and on your character, but there are drawbacks at the same time. Hmm. You know, like that would be cool. <clears throat> yeah, I think more of that would be really interesting. Um, I think by doing that too, they could. They could. I don't want to say make the unique pool a little less muddy, but I do think that uniques, a lot of uniques, really just exist because hey, why not? It, unique, but it's largely useless. Yeah, you watch for sure. streamers go through and drop uniques all over the place, and because they already know what the item is without even identifying it, they don't even pick it up. You don't want people to get a rare you know like a really rare drop in your game and be like garbage yeah no for sure i know what you're saying so. <clears throat> is there a um is there a certain class you're excited for with path of, path of exile 2 that's coming back and returning or is there any new classes that you're like they hope they introduce I actually don't know if they're bringing, I'm sure that they're going to bring in another class or so, but just because of the way that the class system and the skill tree works and the way that they want Path of Exile 2 to largely just be a continuation of Path of Exile 1. Yeah. To the point that it's supposedly going to be the same program, like it's what we have now. Mm. And you'll just choose Path of Exile 1 or 2 when you launch it, I guess. I see. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, I... I think whatever they, if they add new classes, cool. But I have a feeling that they're going to keep all the current ones without, without getting rid of them. Mm, okay. Well, let's maybe we could talk about Diablo for a minute. Um, I know that coming with Diablo, I'm super excited for the Druid class coming up. Uh, yep. It looks awesome, and the animations look cool. Uh, I think Blizzard's doing a good job with the Druid so far, from what I've seen gameplay of. Uh, another one is the Barbarians looking cool as well. Um, Pretty safe bet. Yeah, the Barbarian's going to be sick. Also, I, I'm really sad because I was like a Witch Doctor main in Diablo 3, and I'm really sad the Witch Doctor's not coming back. But I was told that they replaced Druid with the Witch Doctor for 3, correct? Am I wrong on that? Uh, yes, you know, well, yes, sort of. Initially, the Witch Doctor was supposed to be re the replacement for, and the middle ground between, uh, Druid and Necromancer, neither of which class returned in 
vanilla Diablo 3. Uh, of course, the Necromancer came out later on, like many years later on. In a DLC, an, right? Yeah, with a yeah. DLC. But um, yeah, the, the original purpose behind the Witch Doctor was to kind of combine those two fan favorite classes into one class of, you know, that's something new. Okay. Yeah, so, I, the animations are looking good for everything. Uh, and the game's looking pretty. I'm just going to be honest. Like, they're doing a great job with it. And I've heard, um, I was reading up a bunch of Reddit, and people are saying that the a lot of the closed beta tests and all that, everything is looking really good. So fingers crossed for Diablo 4 so far. Um, okay, let's get the uh, elephant out of the room. <laughs> um, Diablo 4, obviously a big main concern for everybody right now is the implementation of microtransactions and maybe season passes and all this stuff. Um, what's kind of your concern with that? And do you think Blizzard's going to come out with just microtransactions for cosmetics because what i've been told and reading up on is that they're going to come out with you know it's going to have microtransactions but it's only going to affect your character's look and it's not actually going to affect the game do you think they're lying on that or do you think that they're actually being truthful i think that what they give us at launch is going to be a much safer microtransaction system than what they actually intend to put into it. Mm. I have a feeling we're going to see level skips, battle passes, you know, all all sorts of things. And but I don't necessarily think we're going to see things like item packs, you know, like buy this pack or whatever and you'll get, you know, guaranteed 10 items of rare or higher value, you know, with one legendary. Yeah maybe more like i don't see them going that route I see but what you're saying. path of exiles used the microtransaction for cosmetics system forever being that it was free to play it needed some way to monetize and that that's fine to me um i really you know having really enjoyed path of exile i've spent more money than i probably should have on things like that because i'm one of those people that for some reason, just changing the look of certain pixels is worth it to me. But don't even get me started on my spending account on League of Legends. <laughs> so, what was the, we looked at me. mine? It was like thirty four hundred or something like that. It was an embarrassingly high number. Yeah, mine was up there too. League. It was bad. Yeah. Oh, like. Yeah. Um, League's a whole other subject, though. <laughs> I my only real concern with with the whole microtransactions in Diablo you know as far as cosmetics go is how are they going to price them it's i even as somebody who buys a lot of cosmetics and things like that in games especially free to play games i'll admit that yeah no their pricing right now sucks there's yeah, isn't it 70 dollars? i think it would cost me 70 dollars to pre-order dabble for which is i, I get it that's a whole nother thing the new 70 dollars price point in games but that was long long overdue in a sense but it yeah. just came at a bad bad time yeah but um sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no you're good my my main concern for for microtransactions in diablo 4 is this battle pass mm. this is not the type of game i feel that there should be a battle pass. I agree. I'm with you. Battle battle passes work in in sh- things like shooters, you know, where it's <clears throat> a game, you know, like a full game might might last 10, 15 minutes, you know, and then back to the lobby, load in, back to the next one, and that that gives you a much easier system of designing, ch- you know, challenges and experience breakpoints for earning you know stars or levels or whatever to your battle pass yeah diablo is inherently a grindy game can you imagine the bullshit they're gonna try and shove down our throats as challenges oh, to I fucking <laughs> to to max out that battle pass oh dude it's gonna be crazy i i actually recently just did a video on is league of legends dying and i, I hated to do that video because me and the history of league but um i talked about how battle passes are kind of killing games um yeah. with and especially with the way riot's swinging with league is like 
And I've seen it, you know, we've even seen it with like uh, PUBG, right? Like they come out with these yeah. battle passes and they're kind of a scam in a way. <laughs> like you don't even get great stuff out of them. And honestly, they don't even give you that much time to grind the battle pass. Like they probably give you what, maybe a month or so. And then there's already another battle pass out. You're like, well, I didn't even get to finish half of it. So unless you play 24 seven, you're not really going to get your money worth out of them. So yeah, most companies seem to have adopted the through the 90 day or three months, you know, season format. So their battle and their battle pass will last that period. You have three months to finish it. So, yeah. which, you know, if that's the only game that you play, I understand, then that's fine. You yeah. could probably play, you know, semi casually and still finish the battle pass in three months. But that's therein lies the problem. What if, like me, you don't just make one game, you know, your your go to game? What if you know you, you variety it out a lot? Like, I I don't want my game or my battle pass to feel like another job. Mm. I know nobody wants nobody wants to go to work come home and then be like oh, i'm so tired but if i don't get on and grind out you know this these two hours or these daily challenges then there's a chance i might not finish the battle pass you know and then my you know then i'm not getting my money's worth and yeah you know and then you get these people that are just angry at the world tired playing like shit <laughs> you know and then <laughs> it it's it's just a, a bad recipe for for community building and for quality of life to your players like these companies need to respect the fact that your product is not somebody's life mm. I, I understand, understand wanting player retention because especially in free-to-play games or microtransaction heavy games player retention equals income mm. but eat a dick nobody wants to go to work to come home to go to work yeah, I know what you're saying. You just want to jump on, play a game, relax, hang out with your friends. Yep. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Obligation is a big a big problem right now with these battle passes. Yeah, no, I I'm with you and I, I, I I'm not a big fan of battle passes. And I could talk about battle passes, I could talk about microtransactions for days. Uh esports I feel like is ruined video games. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on esports. <laughs> a lot of ways, uh, yeah, but that's mostly going to be for shooters. Yeah, yeah. Um, what class are you most ex so? If you know, coming up for Diablo Four and Path of Exile Two, let's start with Diablo. Which class do you think you're going to roll first with your first playthrough for Diablo? I will won't know until I literally boot the game up. Okay, make the decision in the moment. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. It's pretty rare for me to decide on a class before before a game releases and, i just gotta uh, kind of go with what i'm feeling are you are you planning on purchasing the game now or are you gonna kind of do a little bit of safety and wait a couple weeks for the reviews to come in for Diablo? no I'll end, up, I'll end up pre-ordering it like a sucker like most of us <laughs> yeah i already I'm, did <laughs> i already know that i'm gonna play it you know and i already know that i'm not gonna really care about others of people's opinion of it for sure until i form my own yeah for sure that's good no that's good uh, when I was about Path, Path of Exile 2, um, are you excited for a certain to play a certain class again on there, or kind of the same thing? You're just gonna wait till you play the game again. I'm still kind of waiting to see exactly what their plan for the classes is first, but it'll most likely be the same deal where, um, it'll it'll come down to in that one it'll come down to whatever character sounds like it's going to have a good a good position starting position on the skill tree for me to build you know what i'm feeling man be it melee caster ranged it's i'm gonna have to really read up on them just because of how different classes are and what classes mean between the two games mm -hmm. you know like you you're not going to turn a demon hunter into diablo into a grounding pounding melee machine it's not designed <laughs> like that yeah you know, but i could absolutely turn a ranger into a freaking full melee character in path of exile and nobody would blink hmm. i know what you're saying i know what you're saying uh, that so was that was one thing that kind of sucked in 
establish there's not too much ver- versatility right like once you create a character then you kind of got to stick with that class which i mean i get it because that's why you have classes to begin with but then you kind of got to pick which path you want to go down so I'm, I'm excited to see the skill i noticed by the way going back to the skill trees um it looks like blizzard's trying to copy path of exile a little bit with their skill tree so it's oh, that's going to be interesting to see how they're going to their takes going to be on it but i did notice diablo's skill tree is a lot more simplified than path of exile so yeah which makes sense i mean i think diablo's more for the i don't know what do you call it like i don't want to say like casual gamer but oh, that's true it's not as complicated as path of exile right yeah path of exile is more you want to dive in and think <laughs> you want to hurt your brain <laughs> Play some Path yeah. of Exile, but if you just want to, you know, murder things and not really think about too much, uh, pick up Diablo for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you watched a lot of gameplay for both yet? Like, I think graphically they're both looking really nice. Um, I have there. There's not too much really gameplay out there for Path of Exile too to check out but the little bits that they have shown off definitely looked nice it looks like path of exile one but with you know cleaner graphics rtx so. turned on <laughs> yeah yes exactly yeah yeah um and then diablo 4 graphics was never never even a concern on my mind i've pretty much since the very first uh gameplay trailer that they put out that was just like 10 minutes of that druid in a in some early game dungeon I was pretty much like, yeah, okay. I was right. The graphics are going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. You can at least expect that out of Blizzard. Their games should at least be pretty. Whether or not they're good beyond that anymore, eh, who knows? I think, isn't uh, Diablo, it's supposed to launch with the Xbox Game Pass, right? If I'm not mistaken, coming up? Uh... I actually don't know. I haven't really paid too much attention to any console versions or whatnot. I've pretty much, you know, decided I was going to get it on PC from Day from one. the moment that yeah. it was announced. Yeah, I just, I assumed that like Diablo 3, it was only going to be PC at first, and then they'd port it to consoles. But uh, What, you guys don't have consoles? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's phone. What, do you guys don't have phones? Oh, God. So uh, uh, I don't want to get you started on Diablo Immortal. <laughs> no, no, no. We <laughs> we can save that for another podcast. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't want to wake anybody up in the house. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, will you be surprised if in the future, you know, the Path of Exile developers come out with a mobile version of Path of Exile to try to raise stab low, or you don't think they'll ever stoop that low? I would be shocked for the simple fact that uh, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody who would who's willing to put that amount of energy or effort into a mobile game. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, I, I think in order for them to do any sort of Path of Exile mobile game, the the amount that they would have to dumb it down, it would it, it would be something completely different. Yeah, no, for sure. You know? Sure. Um, which fine with me. The more more companies that get into mobile gaming, the worse it is for actual gamers. And that probably just set off a few people listening. And they're like, "Wow, mobile gamers are real gamers." Maybe <laughs> <laughs> for the for the majority, the vast majority. No, 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 absolutely no. not. Booting booting up Snake or Candy Crush on your phone because you know you got a ten minute bus ride to school or work does not make you a gamer it makes you a person who knows how to kill time <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know it's <laughs> but, that's funny yeah i <clears throat> i guess to be fair the fact that you're playing games who you could argue makes you a gamer yeah i mean yeah <laughs> it, it is pretty cool though to see where we've come with technology though this you know making fun of mobile games and all that like it is cool that you can have a whole triple a almost triple a game on your phone now like i don't know it's pretty amazing to me honestly but um, for sure now for me personally i'm not a mobile gamer so i could care less (laughs) 
I I played Dab Immortal just because I wanted to check it out and I, I did enjoy it, but um yeah, I, I'm not a mobile gamer myself. I my fingers are too big and I don't man, like trying to get good at a mobile game, like I tried to play Apex Legends on the mobile. That was horrid. <laughs> like uh the whole screen is filled with buttons and like you uh-huh. can't see anything. I don't know. I don't know why people put time into it, so I just don't get it. I mean I, I, most of the people that I know that actually get really into those mobile shooters like Apex Legends or things are playing it because they can't afford a gaming PC or console. But, you know, yeah, that makes sense. not being not having a phone nowadays is very it, it's very surprising. Not having a console or gaming PC is not surprising. Yeah. You know, so. All right. If you got to do make do with what you got um predictions so what are you going to give to Apple a score of one out of ten um from what you've seen so far and then how do you think it will compare to after it comes out i'm curious to see um i'm i think for me i'm gonna say i i i'm gonna shoot a little high so i'm gonna say it's gonna be at least an eight out of ten i think blizzard's gonna deliver on diablo in the beginning but only time will tell. And then Path of Exile 2. I'm, I'm going to give it up there too. Right around an 8 out, 8 out of 10. I think it's going to be a good game. It's probably going to be a great sequel to Path of Exile 1. Unless they screw it up somehow. But I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think at release. I think undeniably Path of Exile 2 is going to be the better sequel. Mm. Um. One, one, just because of how, how, how much they've shown, you know, that not only is this a direct sequel, but it's it's built off of the same engine, the same game. You know, yeah. it's we know that there's a certain level of playability, familiarity, and and whatnot that to expect. You know, so. Um, I think Path of Exile 2 will be the better game at launch. I think Blizzard once again thinks that they need to reinvent the ARPG genre in certain ways okay. and you know reestablish Diablo's identity. But I don't think that this team of this current Blizzard team even has the faintest clue of what made Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 so special. Yeah. And then I guess 3 was good in the end right like did wasn't three kind of a disaster at first and then it got better over time <laughs> yeah pretty much um i enjoyed my first playthrough of three uh, as far as the story goes yeah and then very quickly after that it became very evident what what the problems with their with their design on release was um mm. it it was really, really, really lacking in depth, content, and you know, for even even personality in a way. Like the game, once you finished the story, there was really nothing left to do except let's go through the story again on three more difficulties. Mm. That was it. That's that's not much to offer. Oh my no. gosh. No, it was drop rates were abysmal. I think I had I had over a hundred hours into Diablo three before I saw my first legendary. The first time one dropped and I heard that noise and saw the beam of light, my reaction was, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> yeah, I know like, what you're saying. It, you know, it, it it they were so rare that in a hundred hours or whatever, I managed to forget that legendary was a was a tier of item. Did you did you capitalize on the market when it was first out, like selling the items in the game and all that, the in-game currency and the people were making bank off of? You know, I sold one pair of bracers. <clears throat> Actually, it was the first legendary that I did get was a le- was legendary bracers. They were Lacuni prowlers for some reason. I even remember that. But what really pissed me off is that they weren't even for my class. First of all. <laughs> First legendary item drops, and it was rolled pretty much straight for Witch Doctor. That's funny. Yeah, and uh, but I did manage to sell those 
on the auction house for about 40 bucks, which I ended up eventually using to fund some World of Warcraft time. Hey, there you go. I mean, so, but whoever thought at Blizzard it was a good idea to make a real life auction house? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 That was that was something. That was not the move. That was a <laughs> terrible idea. For sure. Uh, just does it um does it scare you at all that they're I mean, I guess it shouldn't scare anybody, but does it scare you at all that they're taking the good of three and the good of two and mixing it together for four. Cause that's kind of what it seems like they're doing for Dabble four. They're it, it's looking a lot like three, but it, they're trying to keep the roots of two. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not at all worried about what, about them taking the best, you know, what they consider the best aspects of two and three and using them, you know, in Diablo four, I'm concerned about what they think should be new Mm. what what should be unique to diablo 4 uh that that one has me a bit worried there's there's certainly things you know that the arp arpg genre could do that we haven't seen yet that would be you know amazing to see um is blizzard the one to do that though (laughs) right i the you know we're 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 finally we're starting to see in certain these certain games that you know now that even even though it's an isometric camera view we're seeing more of the developers starting to use the environment the actual fact that it is 3D you know to make the character interact with the world more yeah i think something more of that is definitely a way to go mm, okay I worry that they're going to try and do something drastic like here's a sudden race, you know, racing mini game because you're being chased by ghouls on horseback. Yeah. I... <laughs> and then it's just this cheesy ass like what I don't want this. If I wanted to play a racing game, I'd go play a racing game like I'm worried that that's fingers what crossed to try and do. Yeah. They... Fingers, fingers crossed Bloodborne cart. Hope you're listening from software. Yeah, for real. Just it prints money. Bloodborne <laughs> cart would print money. You know, sweet that would be. Oh yeah. man, have uh, <laughs> Mario Kart turned into Bloodborne cart. Like, uh, maybe we should talk about that. That'd be another good video. To, that'd be fun. I could have so many ideas on that. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah. Um, so I'm I'm excited for both these games, and it seems like you know I I know you are too, um, but I guess only you know time will tell for both of them. Um, I guess we'll see how they both turn out. I'm I'm having high hopes for both, and I do agree with you at Path of Exile too. I think when it comes out, it will be an amazing sequel, and I do agree with you on the point where it's like Diablo Four needs to be Diablo Four. It doesn't need to be two. It doesn't need to be three. Let it be its own game, right? So. Yep. And I think that's what Blizzard needs to focus on. And like you said, like, you know, who's going to come up with the next invention for the next action RPG? And, and I actually did a video on when I was talking about my league video. Um, I think Riot, you know, if anyone's going to be like the wow killer with their MMO, I think league has the potential. I always said that. And I guess Riot also is coming out with an action RPG of their own set in the league universe. So that should be interesting too, how they're going to compete with uh, before and path of exile too. Now, yeah. are we going to see a action RPG set in the league universe? Like in a couple of years? Absolutely not. Right. It takes forever yeah. with their games. So, uh-huh. which they should, uh, they're riot and they, they do produce beautiful things. I don't know what they're doing with league right now. I'm really upset <laughs> with the direction they're taking. Um, but I understand a little bit of it because they are dumping a lot of the resources into other games, you know, but I yep. already heard that. Uh, what's, what's their shooter? Um, Valorant. Valorant. I heard that game's already kind of a mess now. It's not doing well. So, uh, I mean, it, it tried to, it tried to combine overwatch and counter strike. And while I think Valorant is, is a good game, it plays, it at least plays really well. It, I, it, even still, after being out 
all this time, I would say that it very much lacks in content. There are not enough maps in that. Certainly not enough game modes. Yeah. Um, and I agree. It just... I don't want to say that the, the, the addition of abilities to a Counter-Strike-like game is you know made it too difficult to balance but in a lot of ways it it, in a lot of ways they're they're introducing problems to the fps genre more more specifically you know the competitive elimination based fps genre like counter-strike yeah they're they're introducing things that alter the way that you know alter things about the map or the way that things are and it makes it really difficult for them to design good maps and then balance the characters because one character might be absurdly op on a certain map but just mediocre on others yeah they have to nerf him and they're not smart enough to nerf on a per map basis yeah for sure i know what you're saying so yeah they they bit off more than they could reasonably chew there. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get off too far off topic. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to go into the balance uh, into league too much, but did you have any final comments or anything you want to say about Diablo or Path of Exile? Uh, I w- Path of Exile 2 will be very, very telling for the future of Grinding Gear Games, who up until recently made some <laughs> made a lot of design decisions that their community largely despised. Hmm. They seem to have in, in this league, and I, th- I believe the one before it, they seem to have rectified the situation there, listened to their fan base, and you know, fixed the things that, that were unliked. But... Um, hmm. It'd be very telling how how Path of Exile Two launches for whether Grinding Gear Games is in it for the games or in it for the money at this point, which is just something that all companies in gaming eventually come to fall to terms with. Eventually, yeah. Yep. And Diablo Four, I think Diablo Four is going to release and be a good game, but I think that like Diablo Three, it's going to need a lot of things they're going to need to be willing to change a lot of things and tweak a lot of things Mm. because if if they don't deliver on diablo 4 well that's it for the franchise more or less yeah they won't do another title game for a long time or even make another one yeah yeah nobody will trust a diablo title from blizzard they may as well sell the ip Mm. if they don't make it here so which could um, really, really be like, <laughs> I guess we'll see, right? Which yeah, is, uh, it's scary. I'm, I'm rooting for him, but not because I think Blizzard deserves it, but because I don't want to see Diablo die, and I want it to be good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm with you on both of those. So, well, thanks for joining me tonight on the podcast. Appreciate it. Of course. Um. And uh, if anybody's listening to the podcast, um, please, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, put your comments in the, in the section down below. We want to hear from you and give us your thoughts about that before and Path of Exile 2 and which one, which team are you on or which game you think is going to be better or if you're going to be trying them both or we just want to hear from all of you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will see you on the next one. Take care.